Okay, started the recording. So we'll pray and then we'll start. Okay, um, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, that um, that you are the God of uh, God of all creation, and so you are creative, Lord. You are the God of your spirit of revelation and wisdom, and uh, all wisdom and understanding flows from you. And Lord, we we thank you uh, that that we get to receive from you, Lord all creativity and wisdom and understanding and knowledge, Lord, um, in addition to, Lord, what we learn and experience, God, uh, first and foremost, it comes from you, Lord. You are the source, and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And, Lord, so, God, we, uh, yes, Lord, so many times we we have actually um, not really re revered you or respected you, oh, God, and sometimes we, we lose that perspective that you are an awesome God and Lord today even as we come we we come to that Lord come to that place of knowing that you're an you're an awesome God that you're the creator of the ends of the earth the creator of the universe that you are the one who the, the architect the chief architect of everything that we see God you created Lord, you thought about it, you planned, you created, Lord. When we look at our own, uh, Lord, human bodies, oh God, and the internal organs and the cell and everything, Lord, you created, Lord, you planned, you designed, and you created. And so what's an awesome God, Lord, amazing God, your ways and, Lord, your power. And, and this morning, God, we just want to acknowledge that. And uh, yes, that you are who you say you are. And Lord, we lean not on our own understanding, but Lord, we lean on you, knowing that we want to we want to receive from you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you. We bless your name, God. We thank you that you are more than willing to impart, Lord, knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And so we receive from you this morning, God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, uh, welcome back to those who joined us just now. Um, so last session, last class, we looked at uh, conflict, you know, as part of people management, we looked at uh, 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 one, one of the things when, it, when we need to, uh, a skill we need to develop and keep developing is uh, when it comes to managing people, we need to talk about, uh, we need to learn about conflicts, not run away from conflict, Okay, we saw what conflict was and how conflict can, the kind of conflicts that we can have uh, when when people are there working towards a common cause, just because we are different. Uh, there could be disagreements, differences in opinion and so on, and that could lead to conflict. Um, and so how to resolve uh, conflicts, right? We looked at that. Um, so today's session, we, we're looking at something different, which is, uh, you know, creativity, uh, innovation and also uh, critical thinking. We'll, uh, we'll we'll probably today's session we just focus on creativity and innovation and and what creativity is and uh, and how we as believers we have access to you know uh, the very best uh, from the very best like uh, Creator God. Right. So we're going to uh, look at some of that and also um, uh, you know look at ways of uh, you know, look at scripture and the importance of creativity and innovation, right? Uh, sometimes in ministry, uh, we we tend to downplay that, right? Downplay creativity. We think that, okay, uh, maybe it, whenever we think of creativity, uh, most times we think of, let's say, an artist, okay? Uh, when you say a creative person, we maybe think of some musician or an artist or someone who, who sculpts, you know, makes beautiful statues. And uh, so we think of uh, that as creativity. Well, it is true that a, a creative person, you know, does that. But when you look at creativity you know, as a whole, we see that uh, it is to create something, right? And uh, we see that God, God did that and God does that to create something. So when we understand that, we see that all of us are actually creative people, right? Um, just because you don't 
paint or just because you don't sing or play music doesn't mean that you are not creative. Right? So we are going to look at what creativity is, what creativity means, and how we can use that, how we can increase in the scale, how we can use that in our everyday lives. And especially when it comes to you know ministry, when it comes to what the way we live our lives to be creative, right? So we, we're going to look at that. Okay, uh, I let me just share a, a PowerPoint. Um, okay, so uh, I just want to share a few things. I uh, Let's see if we have time, we'll probably watch a video as well. Um, and also, um, yeah, uh, share, share a few scripture on creativity, right? Okay. Um, Okay, let's look at this. Okay, um, I guess you can see this. Just one second. Um, okay, so um, creativity, uh, it's the ability to make something new. Okay, so that's what creativity is. It's um, how we imagine and uh, using imagination, using our, you know, uh, some new ideas. So it can be, it's just the ability for us to create something new, like make something new. Okay, that's what creativity is. So it can be a picture, uh, it can be a book, it can be a song, it can be a new idea, it can be a just a new way of doing things, right? Uh, and uh, it is... Uh, the why of creativity, why you need to be creative, you know, we look at that a little later, but I just want to, you know, share what is creativity, okay? Now, when we say creative thinking is the ability to think differently and also to see a problem or challenge from a new angle, okay? Why? In order to solve it, okay? So creativity allows us to find a new solution, Okay, a new answer, a new way, uh, a, a new solution, a new way of solving that problem. Okay, or, or an effective way of solving a problem. You know, we've tried everything, it's not working. So, you know, you look at it a little differently, you think a different, little differently and solve that problem, right? So that is uh, creative thinking is the ability to, to do that, right? So find a new solution or even to see that the problem does not maybe need a new solution. Okay, so that's creative thinking. Okay. So I just want us to look at this picture. Okay. Um, okay, maybe I need to see how to come out of this. Um, oops. Okay. Um, just one second, guys. Let me stop sharing. Sorry. Um, okay, I did. I come out of that. Okay. Yeah. Just let me just uh, share that again. Okay. Okay. So you see this picture. Right. Um, so, what do you see in this picture? Okay. Can you just unmute and speak? What do you see in this picture? Um, okay, I'm having some difficulty. Sorry, I just need to come out of this in order to. Okay, so um, yeah, Kiran says face. Anyone else? What did you see in that picture? Anyone else? Everybody saw the picture, right? Okay, so Kanan, what did you see? Okay, Dev says word liar. Okay, Kiran says. Uh, okay, so let let's look at that picture again. Okay. Um,
Okay, so okay, you see this, right? You see a face. Okay. Now again, you see a face. It's the same picture. You know, it's a, it's the same picture, a little tilted, and it's the same picture which is you know tilted completely. Okay. Okay, so what do you see now? You see the word. Okay, you see the letters L I A R. You see the word liar. Okay, which we now, if you see, maybe you see that word again, right? But it's just that you know, when you look at it from a different angle, when you tilt it, and you see the word. Okay, so um, yeah, what do you see now? Okay, you see. Do you see a person looking to the right? Or, or the right side of somebody's face, or the right side of somebody's face, or the front of somebody's face. It's actually both, right? It's actually both. So um, you see, uh, you know, you cover one one portion of it, and then you can see that. Uh, let's say if you if you just cover the right side, you see that it's the front portion of a face, right? If you cover, you know, the left extreme side. Uh, then you see that it can be the side, okay, the right side of a person's face. You know, you see both, right? Okay. So um, all just goes on to, you know, um, just one second. Yeah. So just just goes on, or the way we look at it, um, it it's it helps to solve the problem. So, like we said, it's a, it's a, let's say it's a new way of looking at it. So, creativity is just that, right? A new way of looking at the challenge or the problem in order to be able to solve it. Okay. So, all are creative in that way. You know, we can be creative in our thinking in order to solve a particular problem. You now, maybe we we think of it in only one way, but we can maybe look at the same thing 10 different ways, then we could come up with a solution. We could come up with a way to solve the problem. Okay. So let's say, um, uh, let's look at another term, another word. Um, yeah, just one second. Okay, another term is, another word is innovation or innovate. Okay, so what does it mean to innovate? It means to make changes in something that is established. Okay, now, um, this is the way we actually solve a problem. Let's say that is the established way, you know, but then you introduce a new method or a new idea or a new process or a new product, uh, then that results in innovation, right? You are innovating. Okay, for that, again, we need to be creative in our thinking in order to innovate. Okay. Um, so, right. So, yeah. Okay. So, everywhere, you know, we, what we, when we look around, we see that there is so much of innovation. Okay. So much, so much of innovation that's happening all the time. Uh, science and technology, um, uh, you know, especially information technology, IT, there's a lot of information that is, or a lot of innovation um, that is happening. Okay, so, um, okay, let's say uh, if you look at um, some innovations, let me just show you some, okay, um, innovations. Okay. Um, Okay, I'm showing some pictures. I'm just trying to get those pictures. These are not loading. So um, let's see. Okay, um, <laughs> it's not loading. Let me just try another method.
Okay. Um, okay, let's think. Sorry, guys, I'm taking some time here. Okay, just look at this picture. Okay, so what is this? Okay, maybe I'll just... Okay, can anyone say what this is? You can probably put it on the chat. Or unmute and share. Yeah, it is... Uh... It is a phone, right? It is a telephone. And uh, see, it looks very, very different. Uh, it's not a gramophone. It's actually a telephone. Like a gramophone would be, uh, you know, that's a, it's actually to play a record, right? It's a, it's a playback instrument. But this is uh, something that is used for communication. So it's, a, it's a, one of the earliest models of the phone, okay? Uh, but it's very interesting, you know, you have this, uh, which is, um, uh, you know, which is, is a earpiece, so you need to hold it in your hand, right? In one hand, you, you hold the earpiece, and then this is what you use to speak, right? So one of the earliest phones, and this is how it looked, right? Now, because of constant innovation, uh, constant change because of new ideas or improvements, um, the phones have begun to look very differently now, right? Uh, let me just share um, some, uh, some ways in which the phones changed, okay? Like it had the dial, then it had, uh, you know, different ways. So let me just uh, share that, okay? Um, Okay. Yeah, earpiece looks, <laughs> that's true, very much like a torch, right? Yeah. So let's look at this. I think you can see this. Okay. Um, okay. So we see, you know, this is an old phone. Okay. So it is uh, a dial phone. How many of you have seen this phone? Have uh, Has anyone seen this? This kind of a phone? Anyone? Have you seen this? Yeah, okay. Have you used it? In old movies, okay. Okay, Kiran, you've not used it. Okay, I we actually had a phone like this in, uh, you know, earlier. So I've used this phone. You know, it has a potential. Um, for wrong numbers, because you have to dial, you have to put your finger in one of these slots and dial the number, right? And you have to dial it all the way here and uh, and then release it, okay? So these are some old phones, right? So, okay, here's another phone, dial again. Um, okay, so, okay, this is another, same dial, you know, dial kind of phone. Wow, this is an old antique. Okay, you compare this to to some of the phones that we have today, which is you know you you carry it in your pocket, and some of the phones that you you know probably a, a smartphone. You know, you see that there are no dials, there are no you know places to punch also the numbers, but it's all on the screen. Okay, now how did that happen? It happened because of uh, somebody was creative enough to think and innovate. Right. They said, okay, uh, uh, this has these problems. Now we need to change it. Okay, you know, if I have to make a phone call, I need to be in a place. And if I want to be on the road and still make the phone call, or, you know, I want to be walking and you know, talking at the same time, then I need to, you know, I want to solve that problem. How do I do that? So it is all because of, uh, you know, technological innovation. Okay, somebody said, okay, hey, this is too big. Uh, this phone is too big. I, I need to shrink it. I need to make it small, small enough to fit my pocket, small enough to carry it, right? Or uh, small enough on the watch, right? Now we have uh, uh, watches uh, which have, uh, 
uh, which have like smart smartphones uh, uh, also so uh, to fit enough on the uh, you know on the watch itself so uh, well uh, let me um Okay, so I'm just trying to get a picture of that. Okay, and I think you guys know, so I don't, I won't go into the details of that. But uh, the fact is that, yeah, so it has come a long way. It's all because of creativity, innovation. Okay, we need to be creative in our thinking uh, to solve problems. Uh, so you might say, okay, um, you know, how does that help the way we work? How does it help the way we uh, minister? Well, in 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 very different ways, and in many different ways, right? So, for example, uh, we know that uh, we are, you know, wherever we are working, wherever we are serving, we are called to solve problems. Okay, the reason we are there is to work, uh, is to um, help, to um, to to carry out a particular task, and that task involves solving problems. Okay. It involves um, uh, it involves maybe creating new things, finding out new way of doing things, right? And uh, and that requires some creative thinking. That requires innovation. Okay, so maybe you know even in in the way we do ministry, like for example, you know suddenly there was this lockdown. We we couldn't go and meet people, right? We couldn't. Uh, talk to others face to face so that means that we had to adapt to with technology in order to do the same thing in order to minister in order to serve we have to quickly make some changes uh, we have to innovate in order to have a, let's say a church service and we did it through technology we did it because we thought through okay how can we do this you know how can we um, how can we have the time of worship how can we have the time of uh, ministering the word so you thought and you planned and you did it right so even in um, you know it's not just for the you know the in businesses or for the workplace but it's also for uh, for ministry and for everyday everyday life because every day we solve problems every day we we like we we solve things we we find new way of doing things right it is so the end result is to find out ways of effectively doing things to find out ways of effectively solving problems etc okay now um let me just uh, uh share a little bit from um uh, from the you know the uh, from pastor's book pastor's book timeless principles in the workplace and chapter 7 of it talks about innovation and creativity okay so let me just share that book um and you can take a look at that again okay okay um okay i guess you can see it right okay so we um, yeah. So we look at um, uh, when we look at innovation and create creativity. Okay, uh, creativity again is the ability to make new things or think of new ideas. Okay, innovation it's a new idea or a device or a method or a process of introducing new things, right? And wisdom from god helps in discovery discovery is finding out something you know learning something new for the first time okay so these are the differences in the terms you discover something which means you you know somebody's seen it or somebody's uh, found that out for the first time you discover it um, and creativity is the ability to make new things or think of new ideas implementing new things with our imagination innovation is creating new methods or new devices or processes uh, to the already established ones in order to, in order to get a more much more better or effective uh, result okay and it can solve things so wisdom from god it actually brings about you know it helps us to create helps us to discover and helps us to innovate as well Right. So let's look at a few um, scriptures. Um, yeah. Let me let me just make it bigger. 
okay so we see that uh, god reveals instructs and teaches okay isaiah 28 verses 23 to 29 so this is god some instructing something on a on a topic which we might not necessarily think as spiritual right but look at this and listen to this listen to what i'm saying pay attention to what i'm telling you farmers don't constantly plow their fields and keep getting them ready for planting once they have prepared the so <coughs> sorry once they have prepared the soil they plant the seeds of herbs such as dill and cumin they plant the rows of wheat and barley and at the edge of their fields they plant other grain they know how to do their work because god has taught them they never use a heavy club to beat out dill seeds or cumin seeds instead they use light sticks of the proper size they do not ruin the wheat by threshing it endlessly and they know how to thresh it by driving a cart over it without bruising the grains bruising the grains all this wisdom comes from the lord almighty the plans god makes are wise and they always succeed okay so you see that god reveals god instructs or teaches so why not go to him right why not ask him okay and uh, we see that since the wisdom from god enables us to discover to be creative we ask for wisdom okay proverbs 4 verses 5 to 9 and this is the good news uh, bible version get wisdom and insight do not forget or ignore what i say do not abandon wisdom and she will protect you love her and she will keep you getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do whatever else you get get insight love wisdom and she will make you great embrace her and she will bring you honor she will be your crowning glory okay so we ask for wisdom from god because we know that the wisdom of god enables us to do these things right if we solving problems whether it's to discover new things the wisdom of god helps us enables us um and the thing is that god also you know along with his wisdom he anoints us um he is the spirit the holy spirit is called the spirit of wisdom and understanding right isaiah 11 verse 2 the spirit of the lord shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord so these are different facets of the holy spirit and says that he is the spirit of wisdom understanding and knowledge so he's called the holy uh, he's called the spirit of wisdom and also we know about the gift of the uh, gift of the spirit which we see in 1 corinthians 12 we see that word of wisdom right is is also something that is by the gift of the spirit the word of wisdom ability word of wisdom as we studied is is the word is a is piece of information that the holy spirit shares in order to sh- uh, solve something okay in order it could be a wisdom it could be a counsel it could be the missing piece, uh, missing piece in that puzzle right so the lord gives us wisdom the lord also anoints us for skill and creativity okay we have studied this earlier in the in the holy spirit course you see in exodus chapter 31 verses 1 to 6 okay exodus 31 and uh, oops, sorry um okay exodus 31 verses 1 to 6 here we see here uh then the lord spoke to moses saying see i have called by name bezalel the son of uri the son of hur of the tribe of juda and i have filled him with the spirit of god in wisdom in understanding in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works to work in gold in silver and bronze in cutting jewels for setting in carving wood and to work in all manner of workmanship okay so so this is what god instructs moses he spoke he speaks to moses and he says you know this is what i've done to bezalel i have filled him with the spirit okay in wisdom in understanding and in knowledge okay so i filled him with the holy spirit for what to design artistic works to work in gold and silver and bronze so we see that creativity 
to do the creative things. Um, it it could be designing anything. It could be uh, you know it could be uh, things like this carving and workmanship, all manner of workmanship. It says yeah, so which is extensive, right? Extensive range of uh, workmanship, and who brings that? The Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit brings that out. Okay, so um, we also see that um, in in the case of Joseph, the word of wisdom, right? The, Joseph interpreted the Pharaoh's dream. The Pharaoh had a dream, and the interpretation was that there would be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. So Joseph interpreted the dream, but he also gave a word of wisdom, and he uh, gave a solution to that problem. Right. So we see that um, from verse thirty-three onwards. Right, he says, you should choose some man with wisdom and insight and put him in charge of the country. Now you must also appoint other officials and make a fifth of the crops during the seven years of plenty. Order them to collect all the food during the good years that are coming and give them authority to store up grain in the cities and guard it. The food will be a reserve supply for the country during the seven years of famine, which are going to uh, come on Egypt. In this way, the people will not starve. The king and his officials approved this plan. And he said to them, we will never find a better man than Joseph, a man who has God's spirit in him. The king said to Joseph, God has shown you all this. So it is obvious that you have greater wisdom and insight than anyone else. I will put you in charge of my country and all my people will obey your orders. Your authority will be second only to mine. So Joseph interpreted interpretation we know joseph testified god has the interpretation and he also gave this shared this word of wisdom which would help a whole nation overcome right so um so th we see that we need to depend on god receive from god uh, who gives to all you know if you uh, if you look at the book of james uh, the first chapter we see that you know do any of you lack wisdom ask that he might give without, he gives without reproach, you know, without making fun, without ridiculing, without holding back, God gives. So we see that there is a need for creativity, there is a need for innovation. Therefore, we can actually rely on God and um, and receive from him right? Uh, in all these ways, uh, from the spirit of God, from the word of God, we receive wisdom and understanding okay um corporately also uh, you know when it comes to working in a group we can receive uh, 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 or we can share our learning our experience and and come out with you know um, innovative ideas and creativity okay? um now we just need to understand to creativity uh, that god has designed our brain you know the function brain function, the way our brain functions. He has designed it and uh, in certain ways. Okay. Uh, we and our brain ways. And for us, if we understand it, then we'll be able to uh, you know do certain things in order to improve our creativity. Okay. So what are what are that what is that? You know, one of the things that we see, and I'll just put this in the chat. So our brains like complexity and change, which means that we like to solve things. We like things that are changing. You know, uh, especially when you look at babies, you see babies when there, whenever there is some movement, whenever there is color, whenever there is some some noise. You know, they are attracted to that. Right? They, they are, their brain function. Uh, you know, it's attracted to that. So, um, so when we look at something complex you know we are we are programmed or we are created to be drawn to that you know, what is that how does it work i'm curious about it okay so we need to understand that. so which means that you know you look at those things you make your make yourself available to view those things things that are uh, complex things that are uh, you know puzzling um, you expose yourself to those things right the second thing is that learning itself 
gives way for more learning. Okay. In other words, learning breeds learning. Learning gives way for more learning. Okay. So the more you learn, the more we learn, then it, it becomes easier for us to learn even more. Okay. So uh, our brains also are able to learn some, build on it. Right? Uh, we have information and then we're able to build on that information. And this is how God has created us. Right? God has created our brains. So, so which means that we, we expose ourselves to learn things. Okay? Uh, we don't stop learning. We continuously you know, learn things. Um, and uh, here's another interesting thing that uh, our brains make assumptions and these assumptions are based on the existing knowledge. Okay, so which means we learn, and the assumptions and the way we think and decide, it's based on the knowledge base. Okay, what we have, um, uh, you know, what we have actually learned, what we have put inside, we make decisions. We make, and those decisions are also based on certain assumptions, based on our learning. Okay, so. Um, so we, we we learn okay let's say we learn about uh, um, the how to ride drive on the road etc you learn that skill and then so you make decisions based on that as you are going okay you learn you you learn that okay you need to break at a certain place at a certain speed in order to be able to stop okay so when you see the signal you start breaking okay uh, you don't go very close to that you know that vehicle or you know Sometimes we do that, we make a mistake. But then we've learned that, okay, I need to stop here. I need to apply a brake here in order for my vehicle to stop without hitting the person in front. Okay, how did that happen? It was because of the, the knowledge or the learning that I need to stop here in order for enabling the vehicle to stop there. Okay, so um, our brain functions, makes decisions, makes assumptions based on the existing knowledge. Okay, so which means that uh, it's it's good to learn new things. It's good to uh, you know uh, upgrade our knowledge, upgrade our learning. Okay, so we also tend to search for meanings, for patterns, for connections uh, in the things that we learn. Okay, so like for example, uh, well, we we looked at that image and then okay, Kiran said okay, that's a that's a face, yeah, because it is a face. And then they've mentioned that uh, I see the word liar because you know that is it, that is there, you know. But so we are we are tuned to look for patterns. We are tuned to look for you know um, things. Uh, our brains are fun created to you know what does what does it mean? What does it look like? You know. So we immediately we uh, look for patterns. We examine things. So we need to uh, understand that, and also. Uh, very important and sometimes neglected. Our brains like clay, you know, and there's a lot of learning. That's a lot of things, you know, playing meaning puzzles, um, just like how children learn. Right? Children learn. They children they word play. They play uh, games. They learn from that. Um, and there's a constant learning that happens because of because of play. Okay, so, um, but the thing is that sometimes we we stop that, right? We stop uh, engaging in in maybe solving puzzles or you know anything that actually triggers or stimulates our brain. We sometimes we we stop doing that. Okay, so uh, our brains like like play. Okay, so maybe solving something, maybe uh, some mystery, something that needs to be solved, some puzzles, something that sharpens. Uh, our brain, right? That that is always good. So, which means that we need to look after, you know, look after our our brain. Right? We need to look after. We need to be mindful of what goes in, what we what we think about, what we meditate on. Which is what scripture you know, talks uh, tells us about. You know that. We need to uh, be careful about what we think on, because what we think on, what we deeply meditate on, always affects the outcome, the choices we make, the decisions we make, uh, the, our behavior, and so on. 
Okay, so let's look at um, you know how do we okay so, so so this we can do personally this we can do uh, ourselves um, and make sure that you know we are careful about these things so that you know we are learning we are constantly uh, you know uh, thinking about uh, solving things and it helps you know uh, the brain function okay um, collectively one of the ways or one of the exercises by which we can actually uh, improve our creativity is, um, you know, I'm sure you've heard this. It's uh, collectively, it's this thing called, it's this activity called brainstorming, right? Brainstorming, which means that uh, we, we get into groups. One way of doing it is we get into groups and then everybody shares ideas. Okay. Uh, so to uh, share a lot of ideas, to come out with a lot of ideas and, uh, and, and then, you know, in that, in the sharing of ideas, we get some innovative, creative ideas, right? And things that can actually solve the problem. Okay, so here, you know, this is a quote from uh, this Nobel laureate. This person won, uh, he was a chemist, biochemist, and uh, he won a cup, you know, double no uh, Nobel Prize. Um, so Linus Pauling, and this is what he says, you know, the best way to have a good idea to have is to have lots of ideas, okay? Sometimes we, we come up with one idea or two ideas, and then we, we stop, right? But the best way to have idea, a, a good idea, uh, and remember, we talked about creativity and innovation, which needs ideas to be able to solve things. So the best way to do it is to have lots of ideas, right? Lots of ideas and come up with lots of ideas. And especially when we are in a team, right? When you're working together as a team, when you're working together as a, you know, a, a, as a group of people, then it would be helpful to involve, engage everyone in order to be uh, able to share ideas, okay? So that's the thing. So, uh, so that's what brainstorming is about. So you get everybody together and uh, say, okay, you know, does anyone have any ideas about how to solve this particular thing? Okay, uh, do you have any ideas? So everyone shares. Okay, so here are some things uh, at this stage. So what happens is when people start sharing ideas, we begin to judge those ideas or we begin to think in our minds hey, whether that will work or not. Okay. So the thing is, uh, if we convey to the person that, okay, we're not, that idea is not a great idea at this stage, like when ideas are being generated, then that person might shut down or the entire group might slow down that process, you know, saying, okay, let's say, you know, I share some three ideas and all three are not, you know, if you look at it, these are not ideas that you can actually work with, right? These seem to be very, 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 very different. These seem to be totally not related to the problem. Okay, so, but those are the ideas that I've shared, three ideas. Now, if you tell me at this stage that, um, hey, your ideas are not helping us, okay, I will not come out with more ideas. And maybe idea number four, idea number five, and idea number six, are those actually that one needs in order to solve that problem? These could be valuable, but ideas number four, five, and six remain buried because after having heard ideas one, two, and three, um, you know, someone told me that hey, these are not great ideas. So I'll just say, okay, maybe I'll just keep quiet. Uh, no need to share these ideas. Okay. So, so at the initial stage of, see, we need to evaluate ideas. We need to see whether it's workable. We need to see whether it's the right time to, you know, do that. But then at the initial stage of brainstorming, it is not, uh, we're not going to evaluate it, but really to keep those ideas coming. Okay. So, okay. If you can look in the chat. Okay. So everyone has a say, like everyone. So you don't disqualify because somebody's younger, somebody's new to the team or somebody is very, very experienced or old, you don't disqualify that. So everyone has a say. And all ideas are equally valued, which means somebody's taking note of those ideas, right? You're putting it together, you're taking note of those ideas, and you're, I mean, 
making note of it, writing it down, and all ideas are equally valued. Okay, so at this point, no criticism of other people's ideas. So which means uh, the rule is, you're not going to laugh at other person's idea. Okay, you're not going to get angry or upset about somebody's idea, or you're not going to say, hey, that will never work. Uh, you know, that's something that will never, never, ever work. So, you know, you're not going to criticize uh, ideas at this, at the point. Okay, so then you come up with the idea. You so what happens is when you're sharing uh, these ideas, then it can again trigger some more ideas. You know, you share one idea, and maybe someone else can build on it. You know, they feed on that idea, and then they are uh, generating, uh, coming out new ideas. So you know, so everyone is um, encouraged uh, to to participate, to come up with uh, you know free flow of ideas. Okay, now these ideas. Um, Here's another point. So, so and you're encouraged to come up with more ideas. You know, there's a free flow. Just you know, it can be even disconnected ideas, which can then be put in a group or categorized, and it can be put under a you know a theme. Okay, so maybe the ideas are coming about. Let's say uh, outreach. The ideas are coming about how to um, how to care for people in the group in the church. The, there are ideas people are sharing about uh, you know what we should do to um, you know uh, you know because we're just saying okay how can we how can we be, be better as a church? Okay, so the ideas are just coming. Okay, we need to do this. We need to do that. We need to do this, right? So uh, so we can actually. Put that all these ideas, and when people share these ideas, there's some more ideas are being generated. Some more, you know, thoughts. Some more ways of doing things. Some more answers, solutions. But these can be put in a group or category, or put under a th you know different themes. Okay, maybe some are about outreach. Some are about missions. Some are about evangelism. Some are about uh, you know counseling and taking care of people uh, already in the church and people who are hurting. And maybe some some ideas are about um, you know social welfare or you know uh, helping people in financial needs or uh, and with education those kind of things. So this can actually uh, putting it in a group will give. Uh, uh, it, it allows for uh, categorizing. It allows for you know getting things organized so you can build on it further, right? So uh, one of the thing is that uh, you can't rush this brainstorming process. It's important that we we have a start time and end time, but then make sure that there is a lot of time for people to share their ideas, and it can be a very fun uh, exercise to be able to do this and then you can move on to categorizing it and then uh, you know further developing it saying you know how do we go about doing it now yes we know that it's a great idea now how do we you know how do we go about uh, go about carrying this out right so so that can be the second phase of uh, of finding solutions of creatively finding solutions for problems collectively as a uh, as a group Right? So that's brainstorming. Okay, we'll stop here. Uh, we have some more things to share about creativity uh, and how we can, you know, develop creativity in our in our work, in our thinking, uh, in our solving of problems. We will look at it in the next session and then also look at critical thinking. Okay. Okay. So thank you. God bless. We'll catch up later. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. Bye-bye. See you.